Welcome to Keybest Behind the Scene, a series in which we focus on how we obtain our anime looking style and how it affected our approach to the different parts of our first project, Arcadia. Before we even start working on this project, we ask ourselves the question, what makes an anime an anime? There are different aspects we had to consider, so for today's video we will focus on character design. Let's get into it. Japanese animation has its unique and iconic style. When you see one of these characters, you can tell for sure that they belong to a precise and recognizable genre. The most common traits you can see in products like this are spiky hairs, unusual proportion, and of course the iconic eyes which literally define the genre. With Arcadia, we really wanted to create a game that could be awesome both for anime fans and for those looking for a cartoony atmosphere. In addition to anime's typical big guys and exaggerated animations, we wanted to add softness and roundness to our characters so they could, somehow, remind of Disney's characters as well. For all of our three protagonists, we dedicated particular attention to the designs, as they must be both cool looking and express their own personality. So we started from silhouette design in order to tell more about them. We had to make each character recognizable on a first look, especially after switching one another, since the player will frequently change character during gameplay and we wanted to help them figuring out who is active quickly. For our brave hero and protagonist of the game, Taspo, we wanted to express his courage and self-confidence through a combination of a square and a circle. Squares refer to his strengths and reliability, while circles remind of him being friendly and kind thanks to the roundness. His strength is also a game mechanic, in fact, his gameplay is based on moving heavy objects. Irie is a joyful and vibrant rabbit, she can be easily scared, yet she can find the courage to fight her fears. To remark her agility and her gameplay based on jump, we tried to describe her silhouette with a vertically aligned ellipse. This is also symbolic of her personality, as she can be naive and carefree. She really has the head in the clouds. The third one, Angie, is the brilliant mind of the team and faces every problem with rationality. She is an Ajax, which is both round and spiky, so we thought about a design that blends together softness and sharpness. Since eyes are the most expressive part of a character design, we wanted to represent her ambiguity through thick glasses that completely hide her expression. As Arcadia is a game about a trio, every member of the team must have a clearly recognizable silhouette, and we get them by using a solid square, a gentle round, and a sharp triangle. Geometry-based design done, we carefully choose their color schemes. Every character has a vibrant, distinctive color that leads to an easily recognizable palette, which tells more about their personalities. We choose a color based on their approach as well, we use primary colors for simple and extrovert personalities like Taspo and Irie, and a secondary color for Angie as she requires more attention. We choose green as it's a combination between blue, that might be linked to wisdom, and yellow, that is both creativity and the missing primary color. We tried different combinations of green and brown for her quills. Then we finally found a nice one by making her glasses magenta, which is complementary to green and makes her colors even more bright. When we modeled our protagonists, we did it knowing that they had to look as 2D as possible in order to actually replicate their 2D concepts. Our first challenge was to keep their roundness in a 3D environment without making their model heavy with too many polygons, so we decided to keep them around 10,000 triangles. Modeling is not only linked to a character design, but to what they will do in the game as well. For example, Irie has a topology that focuses on her elliptic forms, like her feet or her ears. This way, she is particularly suitable for stretch and squash animation that help her being smooth in mid air movements. One particular detail about her is how we treated her flame shaped tail and fluff on her chest. Since we already knew they would have a strong cartoony effect, we purposely reduced details on them. This way, they will be shaped by the outlines, instead of the actual shape or textual details like the one we proposed at the beginning with our first model. While modeling Taspo, we separated every component we knew they would be involved with gameplay from his body, like his accessories and his clothes. For example, we knew clothes would be involved with a specific mechanic, where they could be thrown away for his ability to hook distant targets. On top of that, Taspo has a really common trait for anime-looking animals his curved-shaped nose. 
Just like other famous characters, his nose starts to look wrong when turning 3D, especially in a front view. To solve this, we decided to make him move always in his profile. And finally, there is Angie. We wanted to give her the iconic anime style spiky hair we see in literally every Japanese animation product. This choice brings ton of problems when it comes to turning into 3D. If you make them too detailed, shading will generate depth, which will make you lose the 2D look. So to do that, we tried three different approaches. In the first one, we made every quill individually. This option would not have solved the issue of self-shadowing, but could have been interesting for animations. The main problem was the high number of polygons involved and the UV making, so we discarded this option. Secondly, we tried a billboard. This method was kinda risky, as we didn't know how it may have affected animation and lighting until we tested it in-game. The biggest problem was that this solution couldn't work with one of Angie's mechanics, so we opted for the third one. In the last one, we created a big body with few quills emerging from it. This way, we obtained clearly shaped spikes and we dramatically dropped the risk of self-shadowing between them. The number of polygons involved was low and we didn't lose quality in the end product. On top of that, Angie is the only character who had two different models based on her playstyle. In fact, she can turn into a ball just like the hedgehog that inspired her design. We used the same method for the sphere model as well, using a main body with quills emerging from it. The final effect was so cool and we love her. We are really satisfied of the style we achieved in recreating a 2D feel when it's actually modeled in 3D and we hope you like it as well. If you have any questions about specific effects and how we got them, please tell us in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.